Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Abiola Abrams, and I am a love, body, spirit coach, columnist, and the author of the Sacred Bombshell Handbook of Self-Love. Now, I want to get us all going. You know, I know that, you know, you had a, a commute here and everything like that, but we are going to be learning some lessons today that I know that what you want and I'm gonna give it to you. But I need us first to, I'm gonna just charge up our energy in the room. Now I do that different ways. Said a prayer before I came in here and I will say a prayer afterward. And so I know that, I know that we are vibrating where we need to be, but I wanna raise the level of vibration. And the way that I do that is, you know, with a, ready? Woo! <laughs> No, I know you didn't see that coming, but usually I say that we begin like that because of that is the international sound of people having fun. All right, can I get a witness? Yes. <laughs> but today, that is the international sound of people not playing small because that is what our lesson is today. How to rise into your shine how to stop playing small, and how to step into your greatness. The thing that inspired this talk, a, a couple of different things. We all recognize this word, right? Fabulous, fabulous, how are you today? I'm fabulous, she's fabulous, everybody's fabulous, but they're really miserable. <laughs> or stressed, depressed, but well-dressed, as I call it. Culture, fabulosity culture, is doing us a disservice when we're fabulous on the outside, but we are not bringing that fabulousness on the inside and we're not really living it. Studies show that despite all of the gains of the past 40, 50 years, that American women are more unhappy than ever before. Why is that? Well, it's because we are working at jobs we don't like, <laughs> spending money we don't have, to buy things we don't want, to impress people we could care less for. Now, that is gonna leave a person pretty hollow, empty, and miserable. So, why is it that we don't step into our greatness? Why is it that we don't rise into our shine? Why are you not, you know, that young girl that, who you probably were at age four, three or four with the courage that would step up, run up, say, do whatever was on her mind? What is the difference between now and then? I'm gonna give us a couple of quotes, well-known quotes that you may know that you know, address the issue of rising into your shine. And the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Anais Nin. Courage is the most important of all virtues because without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently. Dr. Maya Angelou. Whatever you can do, whatever you dream you can do, begin it because Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Goethe. Decide that you want it more than you are afraid of it. Dr. Bill Cosby. Now, the name of the talk, as I said, is Step Into Your Greatness, Rise Into Your Shine. My typical client, although I have to tell you there is nothing typical about these bombshells. My typical client is the woman who looks like she has everything on the outside like we were talking about, she looks fabulous. But on the inside, it's not cutting it for her. Now, we typically work together for a minimum of, of, a minimum of 12 weeks to create a breakthrough with my bombshell breakthrough system. And people are usually looking for a breakthrough in one of four areas, either career-wise in their business, either their love life, um, or in their body, you know, body image issues um, or body size issues or, you know, food addictions, and we'll talk about that and some other lessons, or they recognize the inherent issue, which is a self-esteem problem. Now, there's something called imposter syndrome that a lot of very successful women, got it going on women, get them girls, tend to have. And what that is, is it affects all areas of our lives. You know, the imposter syndrome means that you feel that if the people that you're working with really could see who you really were, the hot mess that you imagine yourself to be, that they wouldn't want to work with you. 
or love you or live with you, depending on where you are feeling like you are an imposter in your own life. Now, when I speak to got it going on women, just like you, about imposter syndrome and feeling like an imposter and about it being a self-esteem crisis, a self-love crisis, I have to tell you that usually women kind of give me some pushback to that. They get a little bit annoyed or irate. Self-esteem issues, don't you see what I got going on? Self-esteem issues, me? I am fabulous. But self-esteem dramas take all kinds of forms. And if you do not feel like you are fabulous enough for your own life, if you don't feel that you deserve the success that you have, if you don't feel like you deserve and are worthy of the love that comes your way, if you don't feel like you are deserving of all good, then that, my dear chickadees, is a self-love or self-esteem crisis. And that is what is keeping you small. So let's first look at some of the reasons why we play small in our own lives, right? Okay. So one of the reasons, the main reason we play small is that it's our comfort zone, right? If we are playing small, then nobody is going to say, who does she think she is? And that's what a lot of us are afraid of. We're afraid of the, who does she think she is to be so fabulous? Who does she think she is to be so rich? Who does she think she is to be so educated? Who does she think she is to be so beautiful? Who does she think she is to be so fit? Who does she think she is to be so well-spoken? And so rather than letting ourselves shine, who we really are, we wear masks. We wear the mask that grins and lies. Paul Lawrence Dunbar wrote that in 1853, I believe, and it is still relevant for many of us. Another reason is that because our, we're comfortable with being mediocre and the people around us are comfortable to be, with being mediocre, we keep on doing what we've been doing and then we think that we are stuck. We say, nothing ever changes, I'm stuck. Wow, who knew six weeks passed? Who knew a year passed? Who knew five years passed? They just went by like that. And, we're, and life is not stuck. Things keep changing, but you just keep changing them back into the same thing over and over again. And so then, yeah, you do feel like, wow, I am stuck, <laughs> right? Another reason is that we are terrified. Now everybody just went, no ish, Aviola, obviously we're scared. I have to tell you, I was having a conversation last summer with um, a coach who I love, adore, and respect, and um, coaches need coaches, and she was telling me that I need to triple my fees in order to properly service my clients the way that I need to, is that I could work with fewer people and go deeper, but I wanna service as many people as possible. And she pointed out that then I could really grow the online classes that I offer and really be able to be devoted to the service that I'm here to do. That is rising into my shine. She said, well, what would you be so afraid of with raising your prices? What would be the problem with that? You know what my answer is? Love, body, spirit, coach that I am, author of the Sacred Bombshell Handbook, Nothing except for sheer terror. <laughs> so we all are afraid. No one is lining up to feel unloved. Who here wants to feel unloved? Anybody raising their hand? I'm not. And we have a fear within us that if people, if we really rose into our shine, that we wouldn't be lovable. That is at the crux of a lot of things that we feel at our source that we are unloved lovable. And if we were really the bright, shining, beacon, starlet that we are, whether it is as a kindergarten teacher, as a yoga um, professional, whatever it is that you do, that we would be less lovable. Nobody's going to sign up for that. <laughs> we fear rejection. We fear failure. We fear success. We fear outshining our loved ones. Ooh, I saw the look on your face. That one hit home. Yeah, yeah. We fear outshining the people around us. So we've talked about feeling broken and flawed at the source, right? 
Another thing is you don't really believe in yourself. You may have a lot of pomp and circumstance, but you believe yourself to be a loser. So when you believe yourself to be a loser, you've got to keep on losing in order to prove yourself right. Another reason, we all have a happiness set point, the, kind, the level of happiness that we are comfortable with. Right? In matters of love, I call it our heart ceiling. Harville Hendricks, um, well, I'm going to talk about that in another lesson, so I won't, won't go too deep into it here. But, Harville Hen but Gay Hendricks in The Big Leap calls it an upper limit problem. We're only comfortable with a certain amount of happiness, and when we surpass that level of happiness, we sabotage ourselves to get back to where we were comfortable. And so, lottery winners, anyone? The reason why lottery winners tend to seem like they have so much disaster in their lives is that they win a big windfall of money, but they haven't changed their mindset. So they still have the poverty mindset that says, I am not worthy. And so then, unfortunately, they sabotage themselves back to where they were. Now, we may look at this and laugh or kiki about lottery winners. Wow, I wouldn't do that. Oh, really? Ever had a job that you thought was great and, and started to show up late or didn't fulfill your obligations or didn't prepare the way that you did and sabotage yourself? Ever had a great relationship with somebody and found yourself picking fights or having problems or issues? Ever notice that maybe after you have, you know, a great moment, shining moment at work or with your family or whatever it is, then fights tend to pop up? That is shrinking in your life. That is not rising into shine. That is keeping yourself small. Now, we think we got to keep up with the Joneses, but <laughs> if the Joneses are the ones who are saying to you, who does she think she is, then you need to get away from the Joneses, not keep up with them. Another reason why we are afraid of rising to the level that we are, should be, you know, shining in is that we had a bad experience when we were kids. Maybe you had an experience like I did in fifth grade, the storytelling competition. I was ready to rock it, walked up to the stage, and I started noticing, well, it wasn't the stage, it was the classroom, but I mean, work with me on this. I started noticing, ooh, there's that boy that I like, and ooh, there's my best friend, and if I really rock this storytelling competition, maybe they won't like me. Maybe I'll seem like I'm stuck up. Maybe I'll seem like, you know, who does she think she is? And so I choked, and I sat down, and the winner was Marissa, and she got up, did the whole story, even though I knew it. I was too afraid. Like I said, choked, sat down. She did the whole story, went to one trip to Africa, and I stayed in New York with the rest of the class making masks <laughs> out of um, raffia, yarn, and clay. So some of us have these childhood stories that we then use to decide who we are today. I could take that story and say, oh, well, I choked when I was in fifth grade, and so I'm a poor speaker, and so Wow, you know, we make up these stories about ourselves, you know, but you're no longer letting that fifth grade you run your life. That was a little girl who made different choices, and I send love to that little girl for making the best choices she could as a 10-year-old. But you, gorgeous ones, have the choice to decide something different. So what are other reasons? Let's, let's just take a breath. Let's just take a breath. What are other reasons why we don't rise into our shine? Because we do not decide that we want it more than we are afraid of it, plain and simple. And so I actually would like us to do a meditation. We're gonna do, when we find out from, can I sit on the stage here? Yeah, I would like us all to do a meditation. So I want you to just get comfortable in your seat and just sit up straight. And the reason why I like to do guided meditations or guided visualizations is that we need for our, our, we need to feel comfortable in our lives with where we are going. Remember when I talked about an upper limit problem or a heart ceiling? That you, going somewhere in a visualization helps our brain to say, oh, okay, I'm capable of that. If you're giving a talk like I am today or teaching a class like I am today, 
if you visualize it, then it feels more comfortable for your mind. You can work out some of the kinks and some of the issues, and then it's gonna be less challenging for you when you show up there in real life. Now, the thing is, you're doing this already, but most of us are visualizing doom and gloom. Oh, it looks like it's gonna rain. I'm probably gonna have a crappy day. Oh, I had sniffles. I'll probably be sick for the rest of the month. But we are talking about how to do positive visualization within our lives. And so if you could just close your eyes, everyone close your eyes, yes, close those beautiful eyes. And take a deep breath, breathe in. Hold it and breathe out. We're gonna do in through the nose, out through the mouth. It's a little bit reversed of how we usually would do it. And I call these breaths fat belly breaths because usually when we inhale, we're used to holding our breath or sucking in. But when you inhale, I want your belly to come out a little bit. So inhale, breathe out. And now I want you to visualize in front of you yourself. See yourself as you are today standing before you, and just see the beautiful woman that you are. Notice her. Now, many of you are probably judging. You're thinking, oh, you know, her hair is kind of messy, or the clothes she has on, or she could stand to lose a couple of pounds. It's okay, let those thoughts pass, and just sit, and just, I want you to just hold the thought and the vision of seeing yourself in front of you, all right? Now, I want you to see another you across the street, if you will. Now the other you is majestic, is living her shine, is the woman that you were born to be. And so now you have these two images of yourself, you know, the you who is, you know, you today, who came to this class wanting to talk about how to rise into her shine. And then there's the you of tomorrow, or maybe even later today, maybe even five minutes from now, who is feeling good in her skin, who loves who she is, who respects who she is, mind, body, and spirit, and knows that she will feel the fear, but she will do it anyway. Now, we're going to do a short version of this visualization today. It's usually longer. You can find longer versions on my site, of course, sacredbombshell at aviolatv.com. But I want you now to see the you of today and the you of five minutes from now walk up to her, walk up to each other. Have them walk up to each other and put palms together. And I want that you of tomorrow to infuse you, boom, with that powerful energy of all you can be, yes. And now the you of today actually steps into, takes a step into that you of tomorrow or five minutes from now. And feel how it feels to be in her body. Feel how it feels to stand up tall and love the you that you are. Feel how it feels to love yourself, to love your skin, to be able to stand and not feel judgment, to be able to stand and know that you are so loved that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of you. And as you stand in that new you, which is really just a different version of the old you, I want you to see, to wish the other you love, the you of today, I want you to send her love. I want you to beam happiness and joy at her. And I want you to just know that you have done the best that you could up to this point and to forgive yourself for any missteps or mistakes or any of that. No mistakes, all lessons. And now any remnants of that former you now take a giant step once again into that new you. Take a step right into that new you. And I want you to keep repeating that in your mind until there's none of the old you left, but it is all the new majestic you. And that you are feeling, feeling good in your skin, feeling good from my head to my shoes, <laughs> like the song says. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. Out. One more in. Hold it. 
and out. Slowly open your eyes and know that you are changed right this minute. You are standing in a different skin. You are seeing the world with new eyes, that we are already different women than we walked into this room. And right now, it is just up to you. If it's going to be, it's up to me. It's a great mantra to have. If it's going to be, it's up to you. You are the ones that you have been waiting for. There is no one who is going to come and save you. There is no one who is going to come and make it OK. It is all up to you. And that is a wonderful thing, because you are powerful. You are sacred. You are chosen. You are gorgeous. You are magnificent. You are beautiful. And you are fabulous. And now I am excited to see the bombshells you become as you go forward with that energy to rise into your shine and stop playing small. Namaste. If no one has told you today, I love you. And I say namaste because the bombshell in me acknowledges, loves, and supports the bombshell in you.